All right. We are live. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done one of these streams. Um, so if this is your first time joining, welcome. I, uh, I was doing these every week for a while, and then I had to take a bit of a break uh, for various reasons. <laughs> and now I'm back. I'm testing WordPress today. So, <clears throat> if you didn't know, I just closed down the window that I didn't want to close. <laughs> ah, that's annoying. Um, if you didn't know, um, WordPress 6.5 Release Candidate 1 was released recently. Um, I'm going to find that, that release post quickly. Uh, let's just scroll through here. There we go. So WordPress is now in release candidate phase uh, 6.1. I found a link to it somewhere. It wasn't that one. It's confusion. There we go. Thomas chat. No, don't find one maybe for plugin developers after that. Oh dear, I found I found a release post not minutes ago. Uh, and now I got lost it. <laughs> Block findings, no. Uh, there was a there was a link here somewhere, I'm sure it was. Now it's gone. Um, anyway. Let's go to WordPress.org news. Yeah, there it is. Um, I had this open a few seconds ago. So 6.5 release candidate was released two days ago now. Um, so I always like to start testing WordPress releases around about for release candidate stage. Um, just because the 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 code is a bit more stable. They're not doing major changes. Um, there is a big discussion around. So if you're wondering where I am now, this is the make wordpress.org slash core site. This is the core teams site or blog, if you will, where they post all their updates. And if you scroll down to the essentially very first post, there's quite a big discussion about the font library and synced pattern overrides. Uh, there's been a bit of discussion about a stalemate on a couple of different topics of 6.5. Uh, the font library has been one of them. Um, there's an issue around storing the fonts in the WP content directory. There's issues around installations that don't support modifying the co WP content directory. Um, so I guess that's probably one of the biggest reasons people have been sort of stalemate. Um, and there's some other filters and things they're talking about. So that's kind of one thing that's going on. Um, and then there's obviously this bits of updates. Oh, there's the link. <laughs> that's the link I was looking for earlier. Um, so yeah, so now's a good time to test. Um, and this is the release candidate post. These get posted every time there is a new beta or a new release uh, with instructions on how to test. And so that's what I'll be doing this week and probably next week. Um, so my default way of updating my local WordPress environment to test is to use the beta tester plugin. Um, it works really, really well. Uh, I'm not going to do that today. Though. Today I want to try the WPCLI version. Um, so if you use WPCLI, this is a way to upgrade to the to the beta or the release candidate. Uh, WPCLI is a command line tool for WordPress that you can install uh, on your servers, on your local environments, depending on if your local environment supports it. Mine does, so that's what I'm going to do today. If you don't have that, the beta tester plugin is about the best way to go about it. Um, so do check that out as well. I will share those links in the chat as well in case anybody wants to grab them. Uh, 
So today I'm going to go with the CLI version. So it looks like it's just a case of running this command over here. Um, I have my local WordPress install at wordpress.test. So this is just a local test domain, local test site. Currently running 6.4.3, according to that, which you can't see because my head's in the way. Let me move my head out the way. Um, oh, it looks like you stole my, there's something funky on my screen here. One sec. Resizing things on the fly. There we go, that's better. So there you can uh, there you can see at the bottom of my screen under my head, there's the 6.4.3 version. Um, I'll leave my head where it is. In fact, I'll move my head up. No, that's not my head. Breaking my OBS setup on the fly here, just so that you can see what's going on. <laughs> All right, so there's the version number, so we can use that to check that it's being updated. And then let's go ahead here. Copy that. And then this is my local WordPress install, I think. Let's just see. Uh, yes, so that's my local WordPress install. So we can run WP core update dash dash version 6.5 hyphen RC1. And that should just work. Let's have errors. Oh, haha, <laughs> errors establishing database connection. This is because I'm not running it on the server, I'm running it on my local. Um, I have my local site synced to a virtual server, so I'm just going to log into that server quickly. Show WP local ENV. This is a custom local development environment that I have. Uh, so it's in WordPress, there we go, so it's the same place. And then let's run WP core update version 6.5 RC1. Uh, there we go, updating to 6.5 RC1. Uh, the downside to doing it this way is you don't get the cool screens inside your WordPress install, but it is kind of quicker this way. Just to run one command, you have to click lots of buttons, and you don't need an additional plugin to have to manage. Um, okay. So that's doing its thing. Whenever I used to do more traditional online workshops, I used to hate the moment in time where some kind of process was happening because I always felt bad that people are sitting around waiting. Um, this being a live stream doesn't bother me. <laughs> this does seem to be taking a long time though. Oh, there we go. Okay. Getting our files. I'm always curious to see that's been removed. Query styles been removed. Interesting. Some images have been removed. I wonder why those things get removed. I suppose it's probably the credits. Interesting. Anyway, let's go ahead and have a look. So this is the dashboard. Let's refresh this. Database update required. Ooh, interesting. Okay, I haven't had one of those in a while. So let's update the WordPress database. Database has been updated. Okay, so that's something to keep an eye out for if you're. If you're, if you're updating things, you might need to do some database updates for this version of WordPress. Um, Elliot says, I love WPCLI. Myself, I'm a huge fan. Um, I've tried to contribute to WPCLI, just I don't find the time, but I'd love to contribute more to WPCLI. Um, I have been fortunate to have interviewed to the current existing maintainer, um, Alain Schlesher. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. And one of the previous maintainers, uh, Daniel Bachu, on one of my previous podcasts. So that was fun. Okay, cool. We are using the development version. Cool. <laughs> Please stay updated. Um, okay, so we're using the development version. Whenever I'm testing, the first thing I always like to do is I like to see what the credits page is doing. Just weird that way. <laughs> um, they normally don't update the credits page until... Um, right just before the end of the release cycle. So this is still the credits page for 6.4, which is to be expected. Um, this will stay this way until they get the lot. They, they sort of design this during the release cycle and then update the page um, at the very last minute kind of thing. Okay, so that's all done. I always find it interesting to have a look at the external libraries and see what's changed. 
I suppose that is reactive. <laughs> React is in here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Um, okay. So we're using the shiny new WordPress. Um, I don't tend to, when I'm testing WordPress, I don't tend to test existing functionality. Um, because on the whole, WordPress is pretty stable when it comes to updates. I mean, there are you know a few things here and there. Um, I test I test existing functionality on my live site when it gets released. So when the new version of WordPress gets released, I update my live site and I YOLO it. And if it breaks, then I just wait for a fix or whatever the case may be. My live site is super important to me. Um, I'm going to move my no wrong screen. Don't move that. I'm going to move my head out of the way. Put it back on the bottom here. Um, and get on with some developer testing. So one of the things that I always like to do um, is take a look at Anne McCarthy's Source of Truth. Um, so this is a document that Anne works on and publishes on her personal blog. Uh, here, for example, is the 6.4 Source of Truth. She's been doing this since, um, I think she started at 6.2. She might have even been doing it before then. Um, and she kind of gets it ready close to when the release is going to happen. And she sort of lists all of the changes that are coming. Um, and what I love about Anne's post is she tags the different updates with things like site admin, end user, plugin author, uh, theme author, those kind of things. Um, and she, she has it cross-linked to dev blog posts and GitHub issues and all kinds of other fun things. So at the moment, she hasn't published this to her blog. She's still got it in a working document. Um, she is very uh, open about saying this is a public document, so please be mindful of the fact that a wider audience than you, you might think can participate in what's shared here. Um, and so she uses this as sort of a living document. Um, she makes changes as she goes. Uh, she leaves comments for folks. Folks leave her comments. So there's an example here of a comment where this was removed and she's waiting to see what happens in RC1 to update this. She might have to move the whole section. So I tend to work off the source of truth. Um, I also tend to work off on the developer blog. Uh, I think it's developer views. Share this link with you. Um, why can't I option B paste messages in my chat? Anyway, so the, there's always a what's new for developers post that comes out around about the 10th, 11th of February um, that Justin Tadlock posts. Uh, and in that, in that post, it also highlights some of the new things that are coming. Um, so what I usually try and do is I usually try and test it about RC1 and just kind of see what's happening. Um, and then um, I then I test again at around RC2, at around the time that Justin posts this, at around the time that, that Anne posts her blog post. Um, and then I sort of see what's happening in between. So those are the kind of the things that I work on. For. So I don't have a what's new for developers yet. I only really have the source of truth, which is in its draft format. Um, and I work off that. Elliot says, sorry, I missed how you got the source of truth. Can you show how you got that? Again? Sure. I didn't actually get there. Um, so I can share with you, though, that this is the training team channel. Um, and in the training team channel, Anne shared her source of truth a while back. She does tend to share it with the training team channel, the core channel. Um, so here we go. On the February the 12th, she shared it um, in the training channel. Um, and so I just book, I just happened to you see myself and Ben a tag on that on that post. So I just bookmarked it for myself. Um, so the easy way to find it is to either go to the training channel in in the WordPress Slack, or just search in the WordPress Slack in general, um, and search for the words. I'm just going to get rid of that. Uh, search for the word "source of truth," and we'll usually share it somewhere along the way. Um, so here, Joe was asking about it on the fifth of March, um, and. I think it might have been an initial post that she shared. Uh, I don't know if she shared the link there, um, but she would have shared somewhere in core, one of the core channels. Um, I might not be in the channels that she shared it in, uh, oh, wait, here we go. There was one she shared in training, faculty, 
uh, there's core dev plus here we go here we go release leads that's what you should so there's a there's usually a release leads channel uh, so in this case it's the 6.5 release leads it is a public channel anybody can join the channel um, and she will share them there as well so those are two places where you can find those uh, because i'm in the training channel that's usually where i get hooked so i just go and search for it there and i go bookmark it for myself and then eventually she will post it on her blog as well i'm going to give a shout out to Anne. so her blog is nomad.blog um, i'll share that link she'll probably post it sometime when she gets she's on afk at the moment she's, she's on leave at the moment so she'll probably post it when she gets back from that and don't hate me if a whole bunch of people hit your blog <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so the other way you can do it if you don't want to work with the source of truth is you can work with the Make WordPress Core site. And you can look for anything tagged 6.5. So if I if I search for anything tagged 6.5, then all posts related to 6.5 come up. There is also a, if we have a look at there's a 6.5 release or 6.5 dev notes. Let me find a dev note and show you. So that's a summary. That's what we can call. Um, that's a new feature. I think this is a dev, what we could call a dev note. Uh, let me just find here. We can have a look at this one in a second. Yeah, dev notes. There we go. Dev note 6.5. So I'll share those two links with you as well. Um, dev note 6.5 is basically everything. All features that are coming to that 6.5 release will get tagged with DevNode 6.5. And so if you go through those tags, you can see all the features that are coming. So that's another good way of checking it out. Um, you will see in Anne's, um, in Anne's post, she actually includes the DevNodes, uh, the DevNodes tag, the development cycle. She includes all of that in her, in her post as well. So there's many, many ways to get hold of all this information. All righty. Um, so the first thing that I want to test today is actually the very first post on the Make Core blog. It's this thing called the Block Bindings API. Um, now, what excites me about the Block Bindings API, it's a very long post, I'm not gonna go through the whole post with you now, um, but the example that they use is adding a blocks, met oh, sorry, a, a post's metadata to a block, so a custom field, for example. So for example, here they're talking about a book genre custom field or a post meta that exists on the post. Um, and then in the paragraph tag, you can define um, metadata bindings content source core post meta and then arguments key book genre. So you can basically define the key that way. Um, so this is a version one of Block Bindings API. So the idea is that you can define meta keys uh, on blocks and they will then fetch it, uh, as I understand it, they will then fetch it from the custom field slash post meta for that post. So if you use a paragraph tag, you can bind whatever your custom field is or multiple custom fields, possibly, I don't know. Um, and then it'll put it in automatically. So that's kind of cool. I know this is something that a lot of folks have been asking for for a long time. Um, currently, it only supports the image block, the paragraph block, the heading block, and the button block. Um, so you can add block bindings to those blocks. Um, what I'm not sure of is how that works in the real world because it looks like here you would add it to the block in the page. Um, you, I haven't quite figured out yet how you would add it to a custom block, uh, but when you're building a page, you could add this in the code. Um, they do specifically say there is no UI for binding attributes to custom fields yet. So you do have to do a little bit of coding on this one. So this is very much developer focused at the moment, um, but I do like the fact that they're starting this. So the example that I'm going to use for this, um, I have some code that I wrote for a learning pathway that I'm working on, which I'm going to share with you in case you ever want to, want to use this. Um, it's a bookstore plugin. So I'll pop this in the chat if you want to play with this as well. Um, it basically just registers a book custom post type. Um, it also, let's open up, let's actually open up that code. 
uh, here I am in PHP Storm, or plugins, bookstore, bookstore.php. So what it does, um, let me make that bit bigger. So it registers a book custom post type. Um, it's public, it has archives, it's available in the REST API, supports title, it's author, all those things, and it also supports custom fields. Um, it registers an ISBN custom field to the book post type. So register meta, object post, field ISBN, object subtype book, so only register to the book custom post type. Show in REST is true, and I'll show you why that is in a second. Then it also registers taxon a custom taxonomy for the book. Not important for today's uh, live stream, but I'm using it somewhere else. And then finally, it also adds a drop down to the custom fields panel so that when you're adding a book manually through the uh, dashboard, you can select ISBN from the drop down. Uh, so let me show you what I'm talking about when I say that. So if I add a new book here, uh, I'm going to say my new book, and I can give my book some text. Um, the I've enabled the custom fields panel in the editor. So if you're not sure what that is, it's options, preferences. Um, ooh, this has changed. This used to say panels, it says something else now. Um, interesting. I wonder where they've moved that to. Oh, there it is. It's under the general preferences. This used to be somewhere else on 6.4. So this is already brand new. <laughs> um, so if you're running 6.5, it's general custom fields. If you're still on 6.4, um, it'll be, I think, panels, custom fields, or something like that. So you enable custom fields, and then it shows the custom fields meta box at the bottom. If you're on a classic theme, it'll be the the drop down at the top. But if you're on a classic theme, you're probably not using blocks, so this might not be relevant to you. But we all know the custom fields um, meta box setup. And so when I go here, I can select ISBN, and I can type in the ISBN panel. Um, okay. So according to the block bindings API, I should be able to bind the um, ISBN field, the ISBN key to one of these four blocks. And then when I put that block on the postal page, in our case, the paragraph block probably works the best. I mean, we could do it after the heading block maybe as well. Maybe we'll play around with it. It should automatically pull that field value in. Um, so one of the things that I did before this session, uh, and let's actually let's actually give this one an ISBN as well. So I'm just going to call it book um, 0002. Uh, and the reason I'm calling it that is because I'm copying this out quickly. I'll tell you what I'm doing there in a second. Um, I set this up and tested that I can submit the book via the REST API using something called Postman, Postman, however you want to pronounce it. And the reason I did that is because in the dev note, it very specifically says that, uh, I'll find it here for you. Note that the show in rest property must be set to true for the time being due, due to con security considerations. So in other words, when you register the meta, it needs to be show in rest true, probably because they're accessing this information via the rest API. Um, and there seems to be some some security issue there. Possibly uh, you might have the ability to submit the data and they don't want you to be able to do that, whatever the case would be, I don't know. But they do require that you have shown reset true for the, for the meta field. Um, and one of the ways you can test that is you can submit the meta field as a REST API post and see if it works, which I did to make sure it was working. Um, so here is my submitted book. Um, and if we have a look, it's got the ISBN at book 001. Um, I'm going to create another one just for the sake of fun and games. So we'll say my post for book number three, because we did two during uh, through the through the dashboard, and we'll submit three. I'll send that off. Okay, three has been added. Um, let's save two here. So book two, we'll publish that. Um, there we go. And now we should have three books. There we go. My new book, my postman book three, my postman book one. Okay, so we've got three books. Excellent. Um, so if I do a quick uh, REST request, I'm actually just going to do this here. So let's say, uh, let me save this one. And let me create. Uh, okay, yeah, let me close these down. Don't save. Don't save. 
don't need that. Okay, so let's create a new request. Uh, and we'll just get the box from there. And there we'll see there's book one. It has an ISBN, or at least book two. Um, there's book three. It has an ISBN. And book one has an ISBN as well. So there's the ISBN there. So now we can use those to test that all this code works. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> so I'm guessing if I look at the way this is implemented. So they talk about registering a custom source. To register a block binding source, one needs to use the register block binding source function, which has the following signature, uh, source name parameters. So it looks like you can do it. You can use custom fields inside the block like this. Um, and then it looks like you need to register the source. Um, I'm not sure if you can, I'm not sure, maybe you can do them separately because this one is talking about registering a source to a block and then there's a value callback. So it looks like this might be something you can do custom. So we might be able to play with both, which is kind of cool. Um, so let's try let, I have not tried this yet. This is literally what I do on these live streams. I go in, I find something, I'm like, let's play. <laughs> so let's see how this works. So I'm going to go into, I'm going to copy this out. And I'm going to go into um, hmm. it's going to be the post template, I guess. Yes, it's going to be the post template. So let's just check that. Let's go to view a book. Okay. So that's probably going to be the post template. So let's go into the editor and let's go into the templates. And it's going to be. Could create a custom template it's probably going to be the single post template so let's verify this by adding a header just above the featured image um and before I'll just put some textures so we say this is the single post template and I'm going to just center this. And I'm going to save the template. Because I'm expecting that template to be the one that is rendered when the book gets rendered. Because I don't think I've specified a custom template. So let's see if we are right about that. Yes, excellent. Standard WordPress, um, standard WordPress things. Um, so as Elliot points out, if we want a custom template, we need to create that template. So I'm going to do that quickly. Um, so let's go back into the editor and there's multiple ways to do this. I'm literally just going to take the single post template. I'm going to, um, I can't revert any changes now, can I? I can't remember. I don't think you can. I think I need to create block theme for that. Um, anyway, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to take this one out. Uh, so that goes back to being our standard single post template. Um, and then I'm going to basically just go into code editor mode. And I'm going to grab all of that. I could do a copy of blocks, could do that as well. And then let's go and create a new um, post line. So it should be able to go here. And there we go, single item book comes up. Thank you, WordPress, for knowing that I have uh, books. Um, can I single item books for all books? And then actually we can just use one of these patterns, I reckon. Yeah, let's just use one of these patterns, that's fine. I'm going to take away the image. Um, I'm going to leave all of this. I'm then going to add that's the title, that's the group. I'm going to add a paragraph. Not a paragraph. Um, that. I'm going to make 
make it a heading. There we go. Okay. It actually should be H1. This is H. That's H1. This should actually be H1. Maybe I'll, maybe I should make it a heading. Maybe I'll just give it a paragraph. Um, so we'll just do that. So now this can be our single book template. So now if I view the book. Okay. Book template. Great. Looks horrible. Don't care. <laughs> We're just using it for testing. So according to this code, I should be able to update the paragraph tag to bind to the ISBN. Let's see if that's true. Um, this may or may not work. I honestly have no idea. So this is the content, uh, which is currently locked. So we'll unlock it. Um, and theoretically, I should be able to edit the content, post content. Oh no, hang on. Can I edit the post content? No, it only supports image paragraph and heading things. Okay, that's not gonna work. So maybe I should edit the header. That might not be a bad idea. Um, no, that's post title. That's not gonna work either. Okay, we're gonna have to just pop down a paragraph to it. Okay. Uh, so let's switch off the code editor. Um, didn't think this through. <laughs> um, okay, we'll just have to drop down a paragraph tag there. So let's actually use let's actually use the paragraph tag that we stuck at the top of the page. Um, that'll work. So this paragraph tag there. Um, <laughs> exactly. Um, so let's find that one. And there it is. Uh, that's the paragraph tag there. I will be honest, personally, this is one of my least favorite things about the code editor in WordPress, the new code editor, is it doesn't do any kind of nice formatting and cleanup. Um, so I find it quite difficult to, to edit it in the code editor. I would much prefer to see it in, a, in, a, in my own code editor somewhere, but it's fine. Um, I mean, I could go that route, but then it would be I'd have to create templates and template files and all kinds of other things. So for now, let's just grab the example. So it's basically just the opening paragraph block tag. Um, so that's this one over here. I'll leave out the align center because let's put it back later. So there's all that code. Okay, metadata bindings content source core post meta. That should work, I guess. And the key should be ISBN. Um, ISBN. And I'm going to actually take this class out here for now. It's probably going to freak out when I do that. That's fine. Um, actually, you know what? Let's do this one. Let's actually keep the align center there. And we'll do this. I'm going to merge the align center into the JSON object. Yeah. So that should work. Okay. Absolutely. Um, I probably should have done this in my local editor, I'll be honest. Um, okay. So that should work. Let's save that. Okay. And then exit the code editor. Okay. That's, so it's done something there, which I'm not sure if I'm supposed to do that. Um, yes, ISPM. Okay. Okay, it's not quite doing what I expected it to do. Um, but let's see what happens if I preview this in the on the book. It worked. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> All right. So that's interesting. So it looks like you put it on the paragraph tag. It looks like it seems to override the default text of that tag, which is interesting. Um, so maybe I should have seen the example. You see in the example, he doesn't have any text there. So I want to see. 
because it inserts it into the paragraph tag. Let's have a look. Um, sorry, folks, my dev tools are a bit. Yes, it inserts it into the paragraph tag. Ah, I didn't see that. Okay. Um, so if we go back to the code editor, basically you wouldn't have this content. Um, so what we could do, this is actually kind of cool, what we could do is we could take this paragraph tag now um, and you could move it, say, after the title area. Um, so there's the title. So we could move it down under the title there and then we could maybe not align center it. And then I wonder what would happen. I wonder what would happen if I put some text in front of it. Can I put text in front of it? It doesn't look like I can. Um, hmm. So I can't give it like a label type thing. Um, but that's not the end of the world, I don't think. Um, I like the fact that it just works, I'll be honest. It's kind of cool. Um, I would, I would prefer to be able to, I would prefer to be able to have like a default text that displays. So this is the ISBN, like this is the content, like I'm pointing at the screen as if you can see me pointing at the screen. So just like this content block has some default text, this is the content block. I wonder if there's a way that that works. Probably not. No, it's probably part of the block. I would like to be able to have like a default text. So if I put something in the paragraph tag, maybe it displays that in the editor, um, but then doesn't display it in the front end or something. Yeah, I'll need to do, as Elliot says, I'll need to do a group with rows to get like label ISP. So that's maybe a better way to do it. So if we add, um, a group block and then have two rows side by side and then move the eyes the here we'll give it a label and we'll say isbn with like a whatever um, and then next to it um, that could work so let's let's save that So that, that kind of works, that kind of gets what I want to achieve. So that, that I kind of like. Um, I would like to be able to have the ISBN, like have a default text, like this is the book's IPN from the metadata. Maybe that's not relevant, I don't know. I do love the fact that it just works. Um, I just bind it to, let's have a look at that code again. Um, I just bind it to the core post meta key ISBN arguments uh, and, and then it just works. So that's pretty cool, I quite like that. Um, okay, so that's that. It looks like then, so that's all you need. You need the register meta set up with the meta field there. If you're using something like ACF, this would probably work, I guess. Uh, I'm assuming, I don't, I don't use ACF myself, but I'm assuming ACF just uses the standard meta fields underneath the hood. So as long as you know what your key is stored in the database, um, then you should be able to do this. So that's kind of cool. Um, so you would need to know what the default output is for the block. And basically you're saying, take the content from that field, pop it straight into the block. Um, so yeah, as, as Elliot said, I'm glad that this is where they're starting. This is where we're moving to. This is very, very, very cool. Um, the other thing that they offer as well is they talk about support for post methods to start and the plan is to add more built-in sources, site user taxonomy data, um, they're also talking about the fact that there will be a UI way of doing it. Uh, that'll be interesting. Like, I wonder how that would work. Like, would you maybe, I don't know, maybe when you, <clears throat> let's exit the code into, that's not what I want. Maybe when you add the field, you'll have a, you'll have a setting um, where you could like enable block bindings and then it'll pick up, you would need to tell it like what, what source um so you'll need to give it the source and you'll need to give it the arguments um but that could be that could be quite fun and you could just set up your custom blocks uh you'll, you know use cust use existing blocks but say the data must come from somewhere else um that's very very cool 
The other thing they talk about, or at least the other thing Artemio talks about, who is the author of this post, um, is the fact that you can register a custom source. So it doesn't have to be a meta field. Uh, you can define your own source, connect it to a specific block, um, and then return anything in PHP. Um, so this is kind of kind of interesting. Um, once you've defined your custom source, then you can say on the block. So so let's do this. Why not? <laughs> um, so I'm going to take this code here. Uh, we're going to use the ISBN setup that we just did. And inside of my plugin, right at the bottom here, I'm going to pop this code in. Um, so it's cooking into the init action. Uh, we're going to call it bookstore. Let's call it bookstore something else. Uh, so let's say bookstore register block bindings. That's fine. Um, and we'll give it a source name of bookstore. Uh, bookstore, let's say um, store name. Why not? Uh, so it's the name of the store. Um, the label is uh, label is store name, and the value callback is going to be uh, bookstore. We'll call it store name binding. Store name binding. So that's it's interesting that I say get value callback. It's obviously it's getting the values, so, and it's a callback function. So that does make sense. So now we need to register that function. Um, and now I can return my store name. So this is something that I might have hard coded. I might also have it in an options field some way. Um, that could be cool. Get it from the options table and then you can use it anyway. Uh, but for now, we're just going to call it John's bookstore. We're going to need to escape that apostrophe. So it's John's bookstore. Um, and now I think I'm going to do that on, I'm going to make a top paragraph above the, the bookstore templates. Uh, I'm going to use that. <laughs> so there's my block binding. Uh, and then it's basically, it's using, it looks, this is interesting. There, so there he is using the paragraph. So let's let's use that code. Um, so let's pop into, where was I? Here we go. So let's pop into here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I'm going to add it to the top of this group. So say insert after. No, that's not what I wanted, but anyway, it's fine. And we'll just say store name for now. Um, it probably will need to be in its own group, actually. Okay, this it's going to be need to be in its own group. So let me... How do you remove a block? Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> let me just delete it. Let me create a group before this. And it's just going to be a simple layout. And in here, we'll add the paragraph. There we go. That's the paragraph. And we'll say store name. Uh, and we're going to make this nice and big and bold. No, make this nice and big and bold. I'm uh, going to give it a bit of a background. There we go. We'll make the center aligned. Uh, we'll make it massive text. Why not? <laughs> um, and then we can start editing this. So. Uh, I probably shouldn't have done any of that because now I'm going to have to make sure the metadata gets, gets sorted out. <laughs> okay, um, so there's our paragraph block. Um, I'm going to have. To, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this JSON object here and I'm going to format it in my code editor because otherwise I'm going to go crazy. Um, so let me just find a JSON thingy. Um, I think the next time I play with these kind of things, I'm going to make sure I've got the theme locally. Just makes life so much easier. Um, yeah, so there's some JSON that I'm going to keep. And then I want to grab the metadata. Uh, we could just pop it in here anyway. Um, maybe let's just do that. Do that and that that so this now needs to be bookstore store name okay and that should be it 
So I should be able to replace the current JSON in that there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this into a new line. It'll all save on one line anyway. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so we've got the paragraph. Still a line centered and all that. Okay, that's still got store name. So I want to see now what this looks like. Okay, so that still has store name. So let's save this and see what happens. Hey, it's John's bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cool. Um, so I wonder, wonder if that means that I could have put something in here. So let me just go in here quickly. Um, where's the ISBN? I feel like I could have put ISBN here. No, that one. that's interesting. So it looks like if you're registering, if you're registering this the block binding based on a meta key, it's it displays the meta key in the block rendering in the editor. Whereas if you're registering a custom source, it actually gives you the default value. Now I wonder if that's by design or I wonder if that's a bug, because I feel like this is a bug. I'll be honest. This is how I wanted to do. In the editor, I wanted to say store name, but then when it renders the content, it goes and fetches the data and returns it. That having been said, that might be because the custom rendering happens on PHP side, and this doesn't have access to that to the PHP code to fetch the ISBN value. So that might be why. Um, it's not the end of the world, but it is interesting. But it's really cool that I can specify a custom source in my code. Um, which means if I want to manage it, if I wanted to manage custom fields, I could have something where I just say, um, you know, get option, um, for example, and what is it? Site name, I think it is. Uh, yeah, it's not site URL. Which which one is it? Hang on a sec. Can't for the life of me remember what the what the field is. Um, no, that was the wrong local password, Jonathan. Um, so let's go here, learn, and options, blog name, that's right, blog name, good old, good old days. <laughs> so you get option blog name, and that would then give me whatever my site is called, in this case I think it's WordPress, yeah, WordPress, uh, you could then do something like this, you could say WordPress store, or whatever you want. Um, so that's kind of cool. I quite like that. Um, it does what it does what it says on the box. I can use meta fields. I can use custom things. The custom things allows you access to so many more things. Um, so that is very very cool and very very interesting. I like the fact that I can use existing blocks. Um, it also I wonder if you can do this with custom blocks, like if you can add a block binding to a custom block. Um, that would be kind of cool. Um, but yeah, that's a fun little little addition going to 6.5. So currently, as mentioned, it supports the image block, the paragraph block, the heading block, and the button block. Um, this is very much still a developer-focused feature. So if you're building themes and you want to use custom fields, this is a great way to include that data from custom fields or any kind of custom data. You've got those options. Um, this is very, very exciting, actually, I have to be honest. I love the fact that the picture says, how would you replace the sentence with data from somewhere else? Um, okay, so that all works as expected. Um, uh, yes, indeed, Elliot. Elliot says, very cool, bridging the gap between classic and block theme development. Absolutely. Um, awesome. Cool. So check that one out if you've got some time. Uh, you're welcome to use my bookstore code that I shared with you to, to play with that. Um, start seeing what you can what you can do with it, what you can use it for. I like the fact that it just works out of the box. I don't know if I shared this link. I did the block bindings API. So I have shared that in the chat. Um, so do check that one out. The other one that I thought was interesting, but a little bit of time for, so I want to see what that does and how it works, is that uh, there is a new thing called plugin dependencies in WordPress 6.5. Uh, 
Um, so this is another very developer-focused feature. Um, let's pop that over there. Um, and basically what this does is it adds a requires plugin header to your plugins. And you can then say what kind of plugins are required. Um, currently, um, those plugins are only the plugins that exist in the wordpress.org repository. Uh, dependent plugins hosted on .org can only declare dependencies that are also hosted on .org. Um, dependent plugins not hosted on WordPress.org can de declare dependencies whether hosted on WordPress.org or elsewhere. However, the UI will not provide an installation link for the third-party plugins. Um, so I'm not sure how that works with the third-party ones, but I'm keen to see what it looks like for a you know, .org directory one. So let's take, for example, Let's go back into my, I'm going to close all of this down now. Um, let's leave that and we will close that and close this, close that. And let's go disable my plugin. Um, I'm going to disable that over there. And then I want to make this plugin dependent on WooCommerce, uh, which I know is in the store must contain a comma separate list of formatted slugs for dependencies such as my plugin or my plugin, my plugin, oh, just my plugin. My plugin slash my plugin dot PHP is not supported. Um, that's interesting. Uh, so how does that work with third party plugins? Forest links such as my plugin, my plugin is supported. Love to see how this works with a third party plugin. Because how would you specify? Yeah, I think there's another way you can do it. You can declare the dependencies for the rest of them. Okay. I'm not quite sure how that could work. Anyway, let's go with the, with the plugin hosted on WordPress at all for now. Um, so, requires plugins, and let's say we've got it's just one. That. Uh, and then let's also say something else. Let's go with a. Oh, why not? The boss cost of fields. Why not? <laughs> Uh, so there we go. So let's see what happens with those two plugins installed. Um, so go back to the plugins list. Yeah, so this plugin cannot be activated because required plugins are missing or active. It shows that it requires advanced custom fields and WooCommerce, um, which then means that I theoretically should be able to install those plugins here if I click on it. Yes, that works as expected. I can install that plugin. Um, okay, done, activated. Hoping this brings me back to the plugins page. It should do, theoretically. Um, okay, so oh, it just, it just does it in the moment. Okay, cool. Uh, so now I go WooCommerce and I go install. Takes a while to download. Okay, so that's installed. Activate that. Okay, so that's activated. Um, it would be cool if this checked that. I guess it can't. So if I now refresh. I should now see that I'm able to install this plugin. Okay, now WooCommerce is going to do its thing. Um, 
That's the one downside about requiring other plugins. If they have onboarding, then you have to go through all of that. I don't care. <laughs> um, so that's something to think about. Okay, so that's that. So now if I go back to plugins, um, then it should allow me to activate my bookstore plugin. Okay, so I don't know if I could blame the, the new feature for all of that. Um, that's just the nature of, of plugins. They will sometimes have onboarding steps. I feel like it would be cool if those plugins could detect that they were being installed via this process and then only trigger their onboarding some other way. Uh, the problem is until 6.5 comes out, they're probably not going to do that. So something to note. Um, but hey, it works. It installed everything. So I'm quite happy with it. I do want to know how you can install a third party plugin. I don't see that in this. I'm gonna have to ask the question about that. I don't see how we could do like a third party plugin that's not hosted on .org repository. Um, it does say here. So the other things to note is you can't do must use plugins as dependencies. You can't have themes that require plugins. Um, this is specifically plugins that require other plugins. Um, and see how this works because if all I can I want yeah I still don't see how I can just pass in what happens if I pass in a slug of a plugin that doesn't exist let's find out uh make Bob's plugin let me see what happens And it's just list Bob's plugin. Okay, so you could you could list your plugin there and then do something. Um, <laughs> Elliot says I like what you do with the block bindings demo can you repeat the interactive API in two minutes. So what I can do for you, Elliot, is I actually have I think you might have seen it, I'm not sure, but I've actually done a workshop on the interactivity API. Um I think it's uploaded to shush. I think it's uploaded to the WordPress channel somewhere. Um, the search interactivity API. Um, so there are developer hours around. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. One month ago. There we go. So if you haven't seen this one, I did do an interactivity API session. About a month ago. Um, okay, you did see that. Okay, perfect. So that would be that would be my my thing. Um, if you want to see the interactivity API in in the wild, I actually built a game uh, using the interactivity API called Dodge. And basically, the interactivity API powers the controls. So when you click on the W, and the game starts, then the fact that when you move with the keyboards, that's interactivity. So it's it's um, Detecting the, the keyboard controls and then moving and triggering the movement. Um, and then also the, uh, um, the buttons. So the fact you can press, uh, uh, I'm gonna have to die, let me die quickly. The fact that when you die, uh, don't care about entering my name, um, and you press R to reset the game, that's the interactivity API. Um, so that's that's one thing that, I, that, I, that I've used it for. Um, if you ever want to check that out but then also check out um, the developer hours um, so if you go to youtube.com wordpress um, search shush 
<laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear that, but every time I come onto this page, that video plays Interactivity API. Um, there's a there's a WordPress developer hours Interactivity API that, that Ryan did. Um, so there's a briefing episode there. So do check those out. There's a building and interactive blocks one. Um, so definitely go through those, check those out. Okay. Right, so that's where I'm going to end it today. Uh, it has been a fun hour testing out those two new features. Um, I'm going to run through the source of truth and the release dev notes, and see what else we can do next week, and then test out a few more features. But I'm really excited for some of the developer focused features that are coming to WordPress 6.5. Uh, I'm looking forward to diving into them properly once they're released. Um, but do check out the source of truth, do check out the dev notes, the links that I shared to get to the dev notes. Uh, it's a great way to keep up to date with, with all the new features. All right, I'm going to call it a, a day. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week and weekend. Uh, and I'll see you in about two weeks time. Same time, same place. Bye.